Hello and welcome. I'm David Knowles and I'm here today to present a short presentation on service level agreements. My presentation today will cover the following topics. A brief introduction to CRM Works, service level agreements and their role, common SLA misconceptions, SLAs and OLAs, SLAs and the service catalogue, and finally I'll conclude with some key points. Before we dive into service level agreements, I'd like to briefly introduce CRM Works. CRM Works was founded in 2001 and has rapidly grown to become one of the UK's most trusted providers of IT service management and asset management solutions and services. Our headquarters are in Swindon, Wiltshire. Having had experience of over 500 service management deployments across Europe, the Middle East and Africa, we offer a truly consultative approach, executed by highly qualified and ITIL certified staff. We are proud to call ourselves service management and asset management experts. Here you can see a handful of our customers. They include GoCompare, Accent Housing Group, Mace, Paul Simon, Action for Blind People, London Gateway Port Limited and Newell Rubbermaid the global holding company for brands such as Irwin Tools, Parker, Papermate, Sharpie and Waterman Pens, Dymo, Graco, and many more. Our customer base is very broad and comprises of both medium and enterprise sized customers. Service level agreements or SLAs are agreements negotiated between service providers and their customers. In essence, they form a contract between the two parties. The role of an SLA is to clearly define service delivery expectations, provide an objective means of assessing whether performance meets those expectations and identify the actions needed to improve performance when required. This capability is crucial in today's business environment where interrelated companies receive and provide services to each other. A common misconception is that service providers develop SLAs and then impose them on their customers, when in fact the clue should be in the A of SLA, as in agreement. An SLA should be based on the agreed needs of the customer. Clearly compromises often need to be made based on what a customer would like versus what they are willing to pay for. The purpose of an SLA is to outline what will be delivered and in what time frame. Typically, it doesn't outline how the service will be delivered, however. In many instances, the ability to meet the terms of an SLA may be dependent on other parties, whether they be other internal departments or teams or external suppliers. To enable this, the ITIL service level management concept allows SLAs to be associated with the operating level agreements for internal resources and underpinning contracts for external suppliers. In either instance, the concept is the same in that the supplier or internal resource is bound by the content of their contract so that the service provider is in turn able to deliver the service within the time frame specified within the overarching SLA. Put simply, OLAs and underpinning contracts can be thought of as mini SLAs designed to ensure that the commitments within the associated SLA are delivered as promised. With the adoption of formal service catalogues becoming more mainstream, SLAs and the ability to manage them and measure performance is becoming more and more critical. Service management solutions need to be able to manage complex SLA requirements seamlessly, an example being when an incident is logged for a key member of staff who has a VIP SLA associated with them. The incident is then categorised and linked with a particular service, resulting in the service SLA also being linked to the incident. Finally, the incident relates to a particular configuration item, which also has an SLA linked to it. In this example, we now have a single incident with three associated SLAs. Our service management solution needs to be able to apply business logic to the incident record to decide which of the three SLAs should be used. CRM Works specialise in Cherwell service management. 
an industry-leading service management solution that not only includes 11 distinct ITIL v3 disciplines out of the box, but also allows customers to both customise these in any way they see fit, or indeed create entirely new modules, all within the concurrent user licensing. Chowell is ideal for all manner of organisations, whether they are just starting out on the ITIL journey or already well down the road to full adoption and are looking for a more powerful solution that is also easier and more cost effective to administer. Organisations starting from scratch can take advantage of the out of the box best practice, resulting in fast deployment times and faster return on investment. Chowell's underlining CBAT codeless business application technology allows customers to not only configure any aspect of Chirwell, but also ensures that all configuration changes are retained when upgrading from one version of Chirwell to another. So whether you are looking at incident management and service request management, here we see an example of a service catalog record displayed within the Chirwell service management client. We can see that the record allows us to capture not only the core service details such as the service name, description and what's included and not included, but also the permitted maintenance window for the service and the associated SLA. When an SLA is selected, the SLA details along with details of any associated OLAs and underpinning contracts are available within the dedicated tabs. This is one example of associating an SLA with a particular type of record. Out of the box, Chirwell also allows SLAs to be linked with customer and configuration item records. If we now look at the associated SLA record, we can see the definition of the SLA, the working hours that apply to it and, in this instance, that IT staff are permitted to stop the SLA clock. We can also see that SLA targets both for response and resolution for each priority can be defined along with any OLAs and underpinning contracts. We also have the ability to link the SLA to multiple services and see details of any incidents and service requests that the SLA is running against. The ability to generate automated alerts at various stages of the SLA lifecycle, then measure performance both via reports and real-time dashboards should be the minimum you should expect from any mainstream service management solution. Well-designed SLAs and strong service level management applications and processes reduce the time and effort needed to administer agreements, provide better and more timely information, lead to fewer service problems and faster resolution when problems occur, more closely align service delivery with underlying business objectives and result in stronger long-term relationships between suppliers and recipients. To administer agreements, consider using a powerful, sophisticated and easy to use solution such as Chirwell Service Management as the foundation for implementing service level management best practice. It is these practices that will enable you to avoid the common pitfalls associated with SLAs in order to gain greater value and reduce costs. I hope you have found this presentation helpful. Please feel free to contact me if you have any immediate questions or if you wish to know more about how CRM works can help your organisation with SLAs or other service management disciplines. Thank you for listening and goodbye.